So, I am responding to a tag video, uh, which is essentially, who would you sleep with, or who would you fuck, Megatron or Cthulhu, uh, that was started by Koki Pirate. Uh, it was just original enough for me to jump on board and say, yeah, i got to make a video about this. So, um, I heard about it originally from Happy Atheist 76 who picked Cthulhu, and then a little bit later from Blissful Melancholy, uh, who picked Megatron. All three of their videos are going to be linked below. Um, but anyways, these all inspired me to make this video explaining why I would pick Cthulhu over Megatron to have sex with. Now, I have to admit a bias. I am a huge Lovecraft fan from way back, and I would probably have sex with any of the beings that he supposedly invented, but which are totally real, dude. Even though no one had heard of them, of course, before the 1920s or 30s, but he was simply that good a writer. In short, I would shag a shug-off. I would go deep with a deep one. I would have a go with a me-go. I would even show an elder thing a thing or two. And I would help Bukaki a bayaki. Well, you get the idea. If you haven't ever heard of H.P. Lovecraft, I heartily recommend that you go seek out his works on all manner of weird things in the universe that humankind isn't equipped to deal with, and let it infect your mind to make the way ready for the great old one's return to our world. <laughs> the word was supposed to represent a fumbling human attempt to catch the phonetics of an absolutely non-human word. The name of the hellish entity was invented by beings whose vocal organs were not like man's. The syllables were determined by a physiological equipment wholly unlike ours, hence could never be uttered perfectly by human throats. The actual sound, as nearly as human organs could imitate it, could be taken something as... The thing cannot be described. There is no language for such abysms of shrieking and immemorial lunacy. Such eldritch contradictions of all matter, force, and cosmic order. A mountain walked or stumbled. The thing of the idols, the green sticky spawn of the stars was awaked to claim his own. The stars were right again, and what an age-old cult had failed to do by design, a band of innocent sailors had done by accident. After vigintillions of years, the great Cthulhu was loose again and ravening for delight. Anyways, let's start with Megatron. Megatron is huge, and he's made of hard metal, and it just doesn't work for me. I mean, just look at his crotch. And I'm sure that thing has a hair trigger, if you know what I'm saying. I mean, some of the Decepticons, you know, in the movies, they can apparently mimic the appearance of, say, a blonde Australian model. I mean, is that a razor-sharp metal tentacle up your dress, or are you just happy to see me? And that, you know, wouldn't be so awful, I guess, you know, so long as she respects the safe word, you know. If she didn't respect the safe word, then the whole thing's done, and I just can't, I, I can't be a part of it. And I, I don't know, Decepticons, you know, I, I've been with some crazy women, it, I just don't know if it'd work out. Anyways, you know, so that might be okay, but Megatron, seriously? I mean, also, to be perfectly honest, in the movies and such, he kind of seems a little bit fixated on the young men. I smell you, boy! Just saying. So, you know, Cthulhu, on contrast, depending on how the stars are at any particular time, has between 6 and 17 different types of genitalia. So, from my perspective, odds are pretty high for finding an octopusy in there somewhere. You know, space and time mean, mean little to Cthulhu, you know, so as long as the stars are right, of course. So perversely bending space and time to make my orgasm an awesome wave of endless madness and insanity, that just, you know, sounds pretty good, you know, to me. 
I mean, also, let's face fact. Megatron was designed specifically to sell plastic toys to children in the 1980s, whereas Cthulhu has been around gnawing on reality and sanity for vigintillions of years and has found his way into every strata of human life and culture, whether that be politics or, you know, the evolution versus creationism debate, or even mundane human religions. Uh, he's found his way into advertising for breakfast cereals, for, for ice cream, uh, different types of clothing, even iPods. He's also made many cameos in other forms of media, including several different types of comics. Uh, he's made appearances on TV shows like South Park, and even The Office. And he's even infested a few Hollywood movies in recent memory. Also, it stands to, to reason he's very popular with the Japanese. You have to say that. The Japanese, they just love Cthulhu. He even recently create, corrupted the minds of some programmers to make them make him his own video game. And also, let's just, you know, coming back to the sex topic, just look at the sex toys that have been made for each of them. You know, there's, there's Megatron's sex toy, and then there's, you know, Cthulhu's sex toy. Seriously, tell me which one looks like more fun to play with. And who amongst us hasn't experienced the madness that is love? I mean, well, it's not that much different with Cthulhu, except by a matter of degrees, right? And just imagine the waves of maddening lust washing over you, stripping the flesh from your bones. And that's just the foreplay. Tell me you aren't a little bit aroused by that. I mean, you can't, can you? Well, I admit, that might even be a little hardcore for me. Uh, but I could easily imagine hooking up with a Cthulhu cultist, you know, uh, the kind of crazy chick who wants to look up with me at the stars at night, you know, uh, with, with love and insanity in our hearts, and wait till the stars are right to welcome back our dark lord and master into the world. And maybe, just maybe, if we, we play our cards right, we might even have our own little Cthulhu spawn of our own someday. Anyways, that's why I would pick Cthulhu over Megatron, even though I guess that the whole thing could be solved by, say, a, a Megatron and Cthulhu threesome, if we could ever get them in the same room together, of course. So, I'm going to end off with some more Cthulhu and Lovecraft, including a, an awesome song that I found that really shows the love for the big green guy. Enjoy. Hey there, Cthulhu, down there in your sunken city. You're a billion light years distant, and the stars look very pretty from relay. So close and yet so far away. E -A -E -A. Cthulhu Fatagin, or is that Cthulhu Fatine? I can never quite remember, cause I'm not in my right mind since I met you. No one corrupts the way you do, you know it's true. Oh, it's what you'll do to me, oh, and all humanity. Except the ones like me. Hey there, Cthulhu, I've been studying your gospel. The Necronomicon, it gives me nightmares, something awful where I see the death of all reality. It fills me with glee. So when the stars are right, you'll come and do your worst, but that's okay, because I know you'll lead the cultists like me first when you get here. I know that day is drawing near. I have no fear. Oh, it's what you'll do to me, oh, and all humanity. Slowly, a billion light years seem so far below the sea, beyond the stars of these humans' putrid souls. You'll drink your fill, the 
fools will all make fun of me, but I'll just laugh maniacally, cause no one's ever suffered like they will. Cthulhu, I can promise you that by the time this coat gets through, the world will never ever be the same. Praise your dark name. Finley McLuna, Thulu Rillier, well known for talking. Boy, that's really quite a mouthful. Can't quite cram it in my noggin, not today. I try to say it anyway. I feel my soul begin to fray. Still I await that fractious day.